Okay. Not a lot of light in here. And this light is actually making this gun look orange. I'm not sure if I like that or not. No idea why it's doing that. Huh. Might be that uh that blanket there. Oh, I know what it is. It's this other light on the behind me. Yeah, because if I shade the gun. Alright. So let me move all these over here. This is my Christmas present. My 2014 Christmas present. It is a six hour P220R Equinox. It is not dirty, it is greased. I do not want it rusting. And when I fire it, I'm already seeing wear on there here. The uh, recoil guide rod. But I suppose that if it's going to wear, I mean, it's a tool. All guns are tools, and this is no, this isn't going to be a safety, uh, safe queen. So, um, anyways, it's got black handles. It's got some sub subduing, like, you know, Equinox. It has some shading, but it's not totally dark. Um, it has some darkness, but it's not totally dark. I mean, I mean, it's that part, you know, the Equinox, that part of the day where things are kind of in shadow, kind of not. Look at that slide. I mean, it's not, it's not a bling weapon. But it, it it is quality. These wood grips are are freaking awesome. It is a single single stack gun. Um, it's also a uh, double action single action. The first round is double action, then it reverts to single action for the rest of the uh, rest of the magazine unless you decock it. That's the decocker. This is the the slide catch. I don't believe in this model, it, this is designed to actually release. You see a lot of people releasing it, but uh, if you notice right here, you'll see that it's not rounded, it's square. You actually have to pretty much force this down in order for the, the slide to release. That's the takedown pin. This gun is all metal. It is, it's got some heft to it. It's got a small uh, beaver tail, not like the uh, Elite models, though. But enough to where you can get under it and not have to worry about the slide biting your, biting your hand right there. The controls are spread out enough to where you're not, you're not really going to be accidentally locking the slide back on the last round. Um, trigger pull is very smooth. Um, sometimes you see different triggers on here like this one actually has body to it. It's not like a cutout. You can see a little bit cut out there but it's not gonna bite my finger if I if I pull the trigger. Um, so these, uh, these wooden grips, they're stained in black. So there's some dark brown. There's a lot of black there. It looks really nice. Um, it's kind of thick on the bottom. You see it starts out thin and it widens. Um, they would have done better if they would have taken these, made these black or dark color like brown, these screws. And I would have preferred hex instead of a flathead because uh, I can see if I change this, these uh, these grips, 
I'm probably going to either mess up my, my grips or the screws are going to look ratty after a while. Um, I don't foresee changing, changing uh, the wood grips to anything else at this point in time. I've had the gun maybe a bit over a month. Um, it has night sights. It comes with night sights. Um, and that front sight is a uh, fiber optic. Um, on the previous models, there was metal uh, along the uh, the spine of the uh, the slide. Uh, they've done away with that. I've heard people complaining about that, and I've seen it. It looks nice that way. I don't know why they did that. But this is a nice gun, a very expensive gun. Um, I'm not really interested in any other SIGs. Um, this one caught my eye and I wanted it. Um, but if I was to have another SIG, it would probably be the three tweet, uh, P320. P, let me say that slower, P320 uh, in a carry edition and 9mm. And I might do a 40. Um, but this is a nice gun. Um, it retails for a bit over $1,000. Um, this particular gun I got at the Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Um, PX. It, uh, and it pretty much went for retail. Um, it comes with two mags. You see, I bought three more. These are the two it came with. I have a 230 grain um, full metal jackets in there right now. I'm ready for the range. Um, these are eight round mags. So the gun comes with two of them. I bought three extra. These are 10 round. And this is an eight round with hollow points. I'm trying to remember what these are. Um, Hornady Critical Defense. These are my home and self uh, defense rounds. I keep one of the. I want to try and keep uh, one of these in the safe in case I need it for home defense. Um, those are better. Um, less uh over penetration from my understanding um so i got five mags these mags are usually running uh mid to uh, high 40 dollar range uh, i got these on sale i believe for a little a bit under uh 30 a piece i bought an extra eight and two tens and while I was doing that, I brought, I bought two uh, extra magazines for my Sig Sauer SP2022 in nine millimeter. Um, <clears throat> this is a good gun. It's a poly gun. You can hear it when I handle the gun. That's plastic. This bottom part is plastic. Also, look at the trigger. You remember the trigger on the, the P220? This one has some cutout behind it, but it is solid. It's not biting my finger when I shoot. It's not like Glocks or anything else. This is a double action, single action pistol. Um, this is the uh, decocker. Um, this is a slide catch, and notice that there's no uh, <clears throat> there's no takedown pin. Well, it's not the traditional SIG one. This is reminiscent of a 1911 style. What you do is you put this down and focus. You align this with that. And you press this down and pushes the whole thing up. Uh, 
<clears throat> this actually feels good for polygon. Still feels like plastic, but it's the ergonomics are really nice. Um, you can change out the grips as well. Comes with two grips, I think a medium and a large. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, so when I bought this gun, this this is a cheap gun. Uh, high quality but cheap in price. Um, I got it for three eighty nine um, on GunBroker.com. When I bought it, I didn't know if it was coming with two mags or one mag. Um, the ad said one mag, um, so that's why I bought the extra <clears throat> magazines. Well, little did I know that. It, he actually sent two mags, so now I have four mags. Two are in the safe and they're empty. Um, from my understanding, this gun has soft recoil, and of course it's a nine. Um, it has night sights, um, no fiber optic, fiber optic uh, front end. Um, the mag release is a uh, can be switched over to left left hand shooters. Um, the only thing I don't like about this gun is it's. I understand it's plastic, but look, you can see scrapes there already, and on this side as well. And it feels like plastic. Nothing wrong with that, but when when I go from this to this, there's a quality of feel difference and I don't mind poly guns and guns like guns like Glocks and stuff like that but I will be stupid to say oh well this Glock feels just like a P220 Equinox uh, no not gonna happen you'll never hear me say anything like that and I will not justify the extremes of such guns I mean such guns uh, <clears throat> you know, guns such as polys, they tend to be, uh, um, loose fitting because they're most of, most of the time they're designed to be swapped out, uh, converted from one caliber to another. Um, and, and so the tolerances are, are designed to be loosed in, in most cases, um, to accommodate, you know, to switch out of parts. And I understand that. Um, and, you know, for for hardcore guns, you know, AK-47 and whatnot, the tolerances are loose so that they can function when they're dirtier, you know, than other guns. You can slog them through mud and not worry about the mud gumming up, you know, the, the tighter spaces in the, in, the, in, in the mechanics of the gun. So I understand that, but still, I mean, when you design a gun that way, it's never, go it's going to be more of a, I don't know, a, a jack of all trades, heavy duty type gun. Uh, those type guns don't normally, I don't, uh, they're not usually translatable into a high end gun. Not usually. So anyways, um, some things about this gun. Um, they usually come with a, a polymer uh, uh, recoil uh, spring guide. This one came with metal. Um, it doesn't come like that from the factory. Um, this was supposed to be a new gun. Um, this tells me maybe it's not a new gun. Um, and now I have to worry about if uh, if I have to return it back to a uh, to the to the factory, you know, for some issue or whatnot that is not stock and I don't want SIG kind of saying well you're not you're not covered in a warranty because your gun doesn't have all the original parts but all that being said I understand that some people don't want polymer you know uh, guide rods um, I was thinking about swapping it out anyway so it's not really a huge deal to me but I wish they would have included the poly one in the in the in the case so that I could revert back to stock 
if I needed to. And it might be just as easy for me to go to uh, to order one, you know, just in case I need to do that. Or maybe I can just not worry about it and just shoot it the way it is. Um, there was something else uh, that slipped in my mind here that I meant to chat about. Oh, when I bought this from GunBroker.com, you know, again, it was advertised as a uh, new. Um, but when I cleaned it, and I understand that some guns they 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 have packing and stuff inside of them, packing grease, and uh, when you clean it out, it looks dirty, but it's actually never been fired before. I understand that. Um. I'm new to the handgun world, but uh, guns have been a big part of my life uh, for most of my uh, adult life. So I understand the nature of cleaning. I know what a dirty gun looks like. And when I got this gun, I decided to kind of clean it up so I could take it to the range, thinking that maybe they had packing grease in it. The barrel had a lot of carbon in it. In and outside. So that told me that someone had fired it. Um, I don't see a lot of wear on it. Um, so again, uh, the gun was maybe misrepresented. But at the same time, I don't I don't really care. I just wish that, you know, when people kind of, when they're selling stuff like this, they should be honest. Um, so... <clears throat> Another thing, this gun, when you rack the slide back, it's a lot easier than doing it with that one. Um, which tells me that, again, maybe this is already broken in because it's not new. Or maybe that's the nature of 9 mils. I don't know. Um, but also, when I rack it, you could hear that it's not a solid sound like that one. So, again... You hear that plastic kind of, it's got metal rails in there that it slides against. But you can actually hear the plastic rubbing against something when you rack it back. Not a huge deal, but it take. yeah, I'm not going to lie. It takes a little bit away from the experience. Um, maybe that's something I got to get, get over. Because again, I've never, this is my first polygon. This is my first time I've ever touched a polygon. So, uh, anyways, this is my baby. Um, <clears throat> my next gun is probably going to be a, uh, P320 in carry version. And then maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a, a full size version as well. Maybe two different, uh, calibers. I don't care much for 357, um, sig but i'm kind of interested in a 40 originally i was looking at a 40 and decided upon this um but uh i got these for uh for my home in uh self-defense uh these are federal H -H 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 -T, uh jhps um with these and with the hornady's for the 45 um I still have to test fire these to make sure that the, the gun likes them. Um, I can't do that at the current range that I go to because that's an indoor range and firing these rounds in, within, I guess, indoor ranges are is frowned upon. So I'm waiting for a warmer day. It's been extremely cold here lately. Uh, once it gets kind of warm, even though it's winter, I'll... Uh, Take the, the guns out and, and test these. Maybe put a box through them. Uh, these are actually expensive and I think they still had the price on them. Uh, the camera won't pick it up. There it is. It's 28 bucks. I believe I got these for 22. Uh, I got these from Dick's and I got these from the local gun shop. So, other than that, there's my safe. It's just something I bought from uh from BJ's. 
typical keypad. Um, and a space uh, behind here where if the battery runs out or if you forget the combination, uh, there's a keyhole back there. Where's my other uh, magazine? There it is. All right. So you can see I got more bullets in there. More rounds. That's the 45 side over here. That's the 9mm cell over there. Um, this safe can actually probably handle another gun or two with ammo and stuff. Um, and we keep other things in there as well. I can't think of any other weapon that I could put on my want list other than uh, I think I want a few striker guns uh, Janik TP9SA um, that's a new gun that's a Glock Challenger uh, that's a cheap gun they're 9 mils um, it's single action with a decocker um, it's a polygon um, it's made in Turkey um, there is a dual action version, the version prior to the SA model. Um, the SA model is the improved model, so the ergonomics are a little bit different. I actually prefer the look of the the older version over the new version, but it's reminiscent of a. It looks like a uh, Walther PPQ. Another gun that uh, I might add to the list is a uh, Springfield Armory uh, X XDS or XDM. Um, maybe even a, a Glock 19 or a Glock 19 instead of a Springfield. Um, maybe a, uh, a CZ or two. Uh, may a smaller version, a carry version. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, anything else. Nothing else really. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a uh, a prepper or anything like that. This this is a hobby of mine. But again, you know, uh, most of my experiences, uh, firearms experiences, is with rifles. Um, so this is my chance to kind of learn about handguns. Handguns. Um, okay. And we're going to end this because uh, it's already reaching the 20 minute mark or well, 23 minutes. All right.